Are you live? Yep. Oh, hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to uh, this special edition of the uh, of Museum Moments. I'm here with Molly Dubin. And Molly hello. Dubin, hello. She's the hello. curator at Huge Museum Milwaukee, and we are <laughs> that she's here today. I'm going to be running some tech interference here, um, but I'm going to let Molly get started on this really fabulous week we've planned that goes back to an exhibit we had a couple of years ago called Founders and Visionaries. So Molly, as I get your PowerPoint ready to go, you get us started and we'll kick things off here. Thanks so much, Ellie. Um, so 2015, we did a terrific exhibit called Founders and Visionaries. And it featured four artists that had work that were part of the Milwaukee Art Museum's permanent collection. These were four Jewish artists. And all four of them were really instrumental in helping to develop Wisconsin's art scene. And they were all part of actually institutions and the development of those institutions that were precursors to our contemporary art pillars like the Milwaukee Art Museum. So it was really an honor and fascinating to do that show. And so throughout this week, we're gonna be looking at the different artists that were highlighted in that show. And today we're going to start off with looking at uh, Aaron Bowrod and Fred Berman. So that's where we're gonna kick off. So your slideshow should be up. Just tell me when to move slides forward, okay? If you okay. add the slideshow, you guys get to see a little bit of behind the scenes. Oh, there we go. And now. Okay. So there we have our two featured artists for the day, uh, Aaron Bowrod and Fred Berman, who, as I said, were uh, two of the highlighted artists here. So that gives you their uh, life dates so you can get an idea for the time period that we're talking about and for when their contributions were made. So if we can move on to the next slide. So um, just to give you a little bit of background, um, Aaron Berman, or excuse me, Aaron Bowrod was uh, from Chicago, the west side of Chicago, while Fred Berman was a Milwaukee native. So Aaron Bowrod was interesting for several reasons. He actually was a war artist during World War II, which meant that he was sent to some really interesting and dangerous theaters throughout World War II and was tasked with documenting what was going on and sending that back to the United States. So here he is on the cover of Life magazine from an April 30th, 1945 issue, which is rather exciting. Um, we had a, a copy of that during the exhibit. So it gives you an insight into the role artists played in terms of documentation. And he was actually part of the Corps of Engineers who uh, were sent to document. So if we can move on to the next slide, there's just a close up so you can get a look at his handsome mug. And so Aaron Bowrod was really interesting. He, as I mentioned, grew up on the west side of Chicago. He actually studied at the Chicago Art Institute. He studied uh, at the New York Women's League where he actually studied under John Sloan, who was one of the founders of the Ashcan School. And the Ashcan School was really looking at life and the grittiness of life. And John Sloan really took to uh, documenting the people and places, the degradation of New York City at the time. And Bowrod really wanted to go back to Chicago and do for Chicago what Sloan had done for New York. Um, so he started doing a bit of that. And some of that translate into some of the work that we're going to see here. But he primarily is credited with really bringing back the still life for his generation and also for working in a style that was known as magic realism. So he's getting into looking at still lifes and kind of putting together objects that you wouldn't necessarily see together in real life. And he also takes it a step further and becomes a master in the style of Trump Loy, which literally means to deceive the eye. So he's he's painting things with this 
realisticness of photography. So here we have a piece that's uh, called the Southwestern Antique Shop. And it, it really is kind of a still life when you think about it, when you think about going past an antique shop, you see this kind of bric-a-brac of different objects from different people's lives thrown in together. Um, you see them in the, in the window. He often likes to have a reflection in the shop's you know, if he's showing glass of the landscape or of the road, but it's really a commentary on how objects are a part of people's lives and how they come to take on a different context, depending on where you're viewing them, where you're encountering them. And of course, what constitutes a treasure is different for every individual. So this is really a nice, uh, composition showing just an eclectic bunch of artifacts from different people's lives and experiences. So if we want to move on to the next one here. So this is a, an interesting piece. Um, this is, uh, this is a, of many things. And this is, again, a still life. And it actually ties into a Lewis Carroll poem, um, which was called The Walrus and the Carpenter. And that whole poem was really actually a commentary about how nonsensical things go together. So here again, we kind of have these objects. This is a close up, but you have a postcard actually in the background of this flatbed truck that's carting away these, you know, absurdly large <laughs> heads of, of cauliflower or cabbage. Um, they're, you know, ripped up maps. There's you know, bits of, there's cans, there's bits of watches. In the forefront, you have one of those lovely bobblehead toys where you can almost see that, you know, velveteen material that we're all so familiar with. Um, so again, giving that sense of, of magical realism and trump loy. So if we can go on to the next one here. So this is called Hawk and Dove. And uh, again, this is kind of a close up here. And again, you can really see this idea of Trump Loy, where he's, you know, identifying the different materials that are being used, um, whether that's metal, that's wood, eggshell, carving, you can see all of that. And again, speaking this idea of, you know, jumbling things together that you wouldn't necessarily see together in reality, but understanding that they can take on a different context. And he really talked about, you know, kind of curating these artifacts and objects and how he would place them and what kind of a narrative they might convey. So really kind of a fascinating piece. Um, so one of the other things I you know, wanted to mention is that one of the things that ties together our artists is that they both taught also in Wisconsin. Um, Bo Rod actually wound up taking a position at the at UW Madison and uh, as an artist in residence, traveled all across the state, he gave different artists critiques and uh, advice. So he came to be fairly well known and sought after. Um, and really because of this jump into magic realism and this rediscovery of the still life for his generation, he became one of the best known and established artists in America by the you know, 1940s. So uh, it was really kind of a, a big thing to have him as part of the UW Madison scene. And we know that he utilized that those connections with different artists to uh, to further his, you know, his exploration of different movements and, and also to get in touch with patrons and to be part of shows and that type of thing. So I think the next image we have here. So this is actually, this is a great picture. Obviously, uh, I, I would say staged, but so this is uh, circa 1965 and this is at his studio at UW Madison. And uh, I can only assume that's a either a relative, a daughter, a niece, or a very young connoisseur of arts. <laughs> kind of looking and uh, seeing how he does things in, in such tremendous detail. So if we can go on to the next. 
So here he is uh, really speaking in front of one of his pieces and the very enthusiastic patrons standing around him looking at that detail. And I'm sure that man in the lower right is really trying to get up close and get a look at the detail and that Trump loy effect that we talked about a little bit earlier. So this is, uh, as he gets a little bit older, again, always stuck to teaching. He loved to share his process. He loved to have people in his studio to really show, his, show them how he approached his canvases and how he, how he put his techniques into effect. So we'll go on to the next one here. Oh no. Uh... Whoop. I think I'm missing Berman from this slideshow that you shared with me, Molly. So maybe just start talking about Berman. Uh, but <laughs> okay. So um, Fred Berman is a really interesting character. As I mentioned earlier, Fred Berman is from Milwaukee and he had studied in Madison um, and actually then wound up coming back to Milwaukee and he much later in life took a position with the Leighton School of Art and uh, then eventually with UW Madison. And he is really credited with at a time when there was a, a, a point in America at this time where there's a genre known as regionalism which is very much, you could look at a canvas and you could tell where the artist was from. If they're painting mountains, they're from California. If they're from Wisconsin, they're painting barns. So um, this was going on at this time and Fred Berman is really credited with introducing abstract painting to Wisconsin. Um, he is someone who uh, really was very aware of what was going on in the greater world. And while the Midwest was a little bit further behind, the rest of the world had really embraced abstract painting uh, that wasn't so much going on in the Midwest. So, so he really brings that to Wisconsin. And to the point where he becomes so well known that at barely the age of 29, uh, he is selected to be part of the 1956 Venice Biennale. And there were only three artists from the Midwest who were selected to be part of that. And Fred Berman was one of them. Um, he was doing a series at that point called White Cities, which were these huge abstract pieces that are really moving into purely abstraction. And there certainly is an undercurrent of one of interest in, you know, urban infrastructure, wanting to see how time and the natural elements had an impact. Um, so that really helped to put Wisconsin on the map. Um, he also worked in photography and worked in assemblages. So he would often take the old kind of wood structures that held printing press blocks and put them together with different discarded items, uh, len you know, glass lenses, furniture hardware, putting them all together. Um, and there's a piece that we showed and uh, I apologize for, we, we, we really went through this quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll we'll be sure to get to it uh, get do a better job next time. That's on me um, of showing you these uh, images. But the piece is was called Beware B E W A R E. It was done in 1964, and then he actually winds up adjusting the sign to so it says Be War, and that winds up being a commentary, as you can imagine, in 1964 on on what is going on. Um, so these are two individuals that were part of, as we said earlier, really putting Wisconsin on the map, you know, developing what became the Wisconsin art scene, the art landscape, and part of these institutions that were precursors to 
our major institutions, our major art pillars today. Um, we also started out in, in the PowerPoint that we're missing pieces of looking at um, the Leighton Gallery, the Leighton Art Gallery, which uh, Frederick Leighton established in 1888. It was the first gallery in Milwaukee. Um, it was on uh, Jefferson Street. And like so many of the other institutions, there were different, you know, incarnations, mergers, things that happened, Milwaukee Art Institute, um, you know, different, different incarnations, as I said, of those institutions to get us to where we are today. Uh, but Frederick Layton really was the one who, who put art and Wisconsin on the map together and kind of segued us into this talk about founders and visionaries and some of these artists that were so instrumental to helping us to create what we thrive and experience in the art scene today. Well, we will put the pictures up in the comments. Um, we totally appreciate you guys tuning in today for, um, for this fabulous session of Museum Moments. And uh, thank you, Molly, for getting us started and exploring this you know, art and art in Wisconsin, because clearly it is a perfect day for that sort of thing. Um, it really is. And just to give you a, a little bit of a, of a look to the future, we're going to be talking about uh, Alfred Sessler in the next session. And then, of course, the beloved Joe Freebert. So lots of exciting things coming up. And uh, as Ellie said, we'll be sure to get the images that we missed out on here today up online. And uh, we'll be sure to have lots of wonderful images in the other two museum moments this week. Um, if you've enjoyed museum moments, as we hope you have, please consider making a donation to Jewish Museum Milwaukee. You can do that at jewishmuseummilwaukee.org. Thanks very much and have a wonderful day. Thank you. You get to end it, Molly. You're in charge. You have to end the broadcast. <laughs>